So let me ask you, if you were to walk up to the car, think about if you're a passenger, you walk up to the car, right? Nice car, whatever. All right, cool. You try to get in the car, the seat's all the way back. You look at, you know, if you're a bigger guy, it's like, damn, I don't have no type of space. You see the dirt on the floor, a lot of dirt here. Okay, I mean, you know, the seats are, you know, the seats are kind of clean, but, you know, you just take a, now you got to be sitting crunched up, you know, you're looking at, like, now you're looking for bad stuff. What does that, how does that make you feel? What I, what I, the first thing that I always tell everybody is you want to make sure that your car is clean. Leaving it dirty isn't a good thing. Leaving these seats back isn't a good thing. You want to try to create an environment of peace. You want to kind of alleviate some of the problems that you may have. You don't know if that guy is big. You don't know if that guy is small. You, you just are that woman. You want to make sure that they're comfortable back there. I mean, they could be tall. They could be short. Whatever. I like to... You know, I, I want to give them a good environment. So this is tip number one. You want to try to vacuum your car first and foremost. You know, you want to you want to make sure that this dirt isn't there. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, there's you're gonna have passengers if you work like I do, um, and you're grinding it out. You knock out, you know. 20 rides in a day 10 15 rides a day and yeah you're gonna have some dirt there but you want to try to keep it clean maybe vacuum it every other day every day you know whatever you always want to make sure that your car is clean because this is your presentation you know we talk about like we talk about how you know like if you're talking about like a first date or you know if you're trying to get a job we always talk about the first impression. This is your first impression. If I'm getting in the car, it's like, okay, damn, that seat is back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, got some dirt on the ground. Car doesn't look all that clean. Yeah, I mean, I guess I got to get in here, right? Yeah, it is what it is. You don't want that, you know, when you're talking about helping somebody tip or trying to get people more better increasing your tips this is the first step so what i do i bring that passenger side seat i bring it up so don't mind the mess <laughs> i do keep my stuff in the front seat um but i bring this passenger seat on up and i'll show you guys in a second Okay, cool. So I do try to bring that passenger seat up. You know, I want it to be kind of way up here. I want it to be way up here because that way, now when that person gets in the car, same kind of conversation. All right, boom. Now you're looking at a lot of space. You know, they can stretch their legs out, they can cross their legs. You know, there's all different types of stuff that people do in your car, but like, at least they have space. I don't have to worry about them. And also the fact that I don't have to worry about them kneeing me in the back, <laughs> you know, or kneeing that to keep knocking that seat. Because, you know, with their knees, they're gonna start making marks right here. Um, you know, people wear different types of stuff. This is how you kind of take care of your car. You know, they're gonna get in and they're gonna knee it. They're gonna scratch it. Um, so as you can see, I mean, for my car, I don't really have any type of scratches because I pull that seat up. I also pull up my seat, like if it's two people, um, you know, two bigger people, I might pull up a little bit. Again, I'm not saying make yourself just horribly uncomfortable, but I am just saying, you know, this is stuff that you want to think about. You see a taller person, okay, boom. I don't have to worry about if they're tall or short because generally a tall person is going to go to the to the clear side okay they you know people look in the car they see that 
they're going to go to this side, you know, because they want space. I mean, think about what people ultimately want. You want to be comfortable when you're when you're getting a ride. You create that level of comfort, they're more likely to tip, you know. So let me knock out the floor real quick, and uh, I'll get back to you and just kind of show you the floor. All right, so as you can see, it's much cleaner. Now, you know, just a little bit of dirt, but compared to what it was, <laughs> it's so much better. I do need to get a brush, and obviously I need to put some mats in here. I just haven't done it. Um, but, you know, again, remember, your passenger is going to get in your car. Even if they don't say anything to you, they've already made a judgment about you. And, you know, it's up to you how you want them to, first of all, have that first impression. You know, I get it. You know, now, if it's just that you're right, you got you didn't took a lot of people. It may be slightly dirty, whatever. That is what it is. But I'm just saying, when I get in this car now, I see. So as a passenger, I see the seat up. Damn. So he's actually like trying to make sure that I'm comfortable. I see like the floor is kind of clean. It, it, it's clean for the most part. And this is a guy that absolutely takes care of this car. Hmm. I already have. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood already when I get in the car. Again, you know, this is like self psychology type stuff. So forgive me. <laughs> but you know, this is this is the first step. This is the first biggest tip that I could give you. Okay. All right. So the second and biggest way that you can increase your tips is by having a good conversation. I know it sounds weird. I know it's like, what, what are you talking about? The conversation is really the most important part because that's what's going to kind of alleviate you from every other Uber ride, every other Lyft ride, whatever that they've had in the past. You want to leave a lasting impression and just saying, you know, the, the greeting or just saying a salutation, good morning, all right, have a good day. Just saying that isn't enough. I mean, for me, it's standard on every ride, but in the middle is what it's all about. So while somebody's asking me questions, while somebody's talking to me, I go into, um, I'll say it like this. this. So this is sales 101. Just forgive me. I know a lot of people aren't in sales, but I go into basically, I, I go into a character, so to speak. Not to say that I'm just completely fake and I'm just, you know, a shell of myself but it's just that i'm trying to give the answers that i feel like they may want and i'm trying to create that persona of uh, of a calm and i'm just trying to match their energy so to speak you know that's ultimately what it is so if they're getting in the car hey buddy how are you doing today bro i'm doing great <laughs> you know i'm gonna match that or they get in the car yeah man hey how you doing ah uh, yeah bro i'm doing all right yeah yeah long day yeah okay cool cool i'm matching that energy uh because at the end of the day you've created the environment you made sure the car is clean you've kind of created that open space for them to be relaxed now it's about meeting them where they're at and it just giving an enjoyable experience. You know, sometimes the best experiences are when you don't say anything. Other times it's when you have a really intriguing conversation. You know, whatever the case is, they have to, people have to feel comfortable to talk to you. Likewise, you have to feel comfortable to talk to them. So, uh, you know, that's why I say you start with the comfort. You want to make sure that the car is comfortable because as the ride goes along or just them getting in your car, when they're comfortable, they're going to talk to you. And as they talk to you, that's opportunities for you to talk about yourself, for you to network, for you to grow, to learn things. I mean, you don't know who is in your car. I've had lawyers. I've had, you know, uh, I've had, oh, I said lawyers. I've had police officers in my car. I've had um, teachers, professors in my car. I've come across a lot. I've had business people in my car. 
you know, I've had Forex people in my car. Uh, you know, it, the list goes on. And yeah, you know, I do have some things I'm actually intrigued about. And I do it, you know, now we're having a conversation and I'm, I get the chance to learn. I get the chance to ask questions. But also it's just a point of, I, you don't know who's in your back seat. Just like you don't know what they're going through. So sometimes, you know, sometimes it is just we have conversations and it's like, yeah, you know, this is what some, something what they needed and they got it. Or sometimes it's just that I, I needed to have a conversation because I'm just in my head all day, you know, listening to my podcast or listening to the music, whatever. I'm just kind of zoned out and I'm just going through the motions. Whatever the case is, it's about the conversation. Um, I put it to you like this. Think about the last couple of times that you actually tipped somebody. That you really came out your pocket and said, you know what, I'm going to give them $5. I'm going to give them, you know. So, yeah, like, think about how many times you've actually done that. Um, and you've like, all right, you know what, I'm going to make sure that they good. It's usually because of that experience. I keep going back to the experience. I keep going back to when you actually tip. See, a lot of times we get into these these professions, these rides, you know, we take deliveries, we take rides, and it's like, ah, oh, they didn't tip. But did you, I mean, like, if you were back there, if you were your passenger, would you have tipped you? And that's the real question. Would you have came out of your pocket after the ride that you gave and said, you know what? I already paid $10, 15 $30 because, you know, Uber rips us off. I done paid $30. Eh, I guess that driver deserves another $30, another $5, another $3, another $10. Knowing the ride that you just gave. You know, like a lot of times you have to put yourself in the position of a passenger and what is going to make you know, that person want to tip you. It's not required. It's not guaranteed. Listen, we do what we do. We get paid what we get paid. It is what it is. You either choose to accept it or you don't. And that's that standpoint of Uber. Yeah, sure, you may fall in, in somewhere else along the line, but, you know, it's what it is. Uber's not going to force them to tip. You can't say, hey, look, uh, you need to tip because obviously they're just going to report you. So you kind of got to walk. You got to find your balance. Um, you got to find like your thin line where you want to kind of sit. You know, do you sit on the side of, oh, yeah, well, everybody that gets in my car has to tip. Or do you fall on the line? I, listen, I don't care. As long as I do what I do, I'm going to make my money and I'll be good. You kind of have to find your your balance. But at the end of the day, very simple. Would you have tipped you for that ride? And if you wouldn't have, then you can't really expect for the passenger to tip. Absolutely, there are people that will tip no matter what. But we're talking about the middle percent of people that may tip or may not, you know. To what's going to get those people to tip you, you know? And ultimately, it's first it starts with the comfort making sure that they're comfortable when they get in your car then it's the conversation and you know when i get done with this we'll talk about the third one so hey everybody okay so i'm back so i just wanted to kind of go over the third and most important thing uh fitting enough i'm driving as well uh so the third and most important way that you can kind of increase your tips is based on how you drive. I know, yeah, that's kind of basic, but uh, it's more than just, you know, getting people to their destination safely. It's more than just being, you know, not speeding or following the rules. It's about the way that you drive, okay? So, um, you know, I've been talking a lot about the experience. I've been talking a lot about just how people feel when they get in your car, um, but, and that's what it ultimately comes down to. 
It's about the way you make people feel. That's how you increase your tips. If you make people feel good when they're in your car, they're obviously gonna tip you more than if they don't, <laughs> you know? If when people get in your car, they feel super negative, you can obviously guess that, yeah, they're not gonna tip you. <laughs> uh, so it's about the way that you drive, okay? So uh, what do I mean, okay? Uh, you wanna kinda work on being smooth while you drive, all right? I, I get it, you know, it's our car. I get it, these people just got in, they don't know us, they could care less who we are, they don't know our personal lives. But at the end of the day, you know, these people are getting in your car and you want to be as smooth as possible. So what do I mean? When you're coming to a break, you don't want to kind of come to a break. You don't want to like, like, like say stop and go or say you're coming to a red light. You don't want to just jam on the brakes and make everybody kind of like, uh, you know, you want to take your, you want to ease into it. Okay ease into the break you want to do it gently gently is a word for everything right gently is is super important you want to be very gentle as you're driving um you know you want to make sure that I, okay how about this this is what i learned uh so you know i i was i, I used to be a chauffeur for a long time and one of the biggest things when you when you do a limousine is that you want to be super smooth. This is where this kind of comes from. <laughs> so forgive me. But imagine like you had an egg on top of your car, right? Um, let's say the egg actually sat and it actually fit right here on the top of your car. You want to make sure that the egg stays there the whole trip. I get it. Bumps. I get it. You know, there's just things that you can't control. But in terms of your driving, you can make, you can almost guarantee that that egg will still be there by the way that you drive. So you don't accelerate super hard. When the light turns green, you're not, oh, let's go. You're, you're you know, when the light turns red, you're not, oh, you, you know, like pressing on the brake. I'm using the sound effects, but you kind of understand what I'm saying. You're, you you ease into stuff. Okay, the light turns green. Okay, you ease into moving off. The light turns red. Okay, you ease into a stop. You know, you obviously have to give yourself some distance between you and the other car. You know, like you're when you're turning, you're smooth. You're not jerky like people do. You're not death gripping the wheel. You know, you're like kind of letting it slide through your fingers. Driving what I like what I like the how I know that I've done a really good job in terms of like being smooth and efficient and all of that stuff is when I have people that get in my car and they fall asleep so like when I I, I get it you know during the day most people aren't going to sleep whatever but I'm just saying I kind of and obviously I've been doing this for a while but like when at night I so as you can tell it's nighttime um I kind of work early morning sometimes sometimes I work during the day but let's say it's night right I get a bunch of people let's say I take 20 people okay how I know that I've done really well is when one or two of them fall asleep now I know what you're gonna say well you take drunk people yeah, you know, it's just, it's early in the morning, so people are just tired. Yeah, I get it. Um, you're absolutely right. It's just, yeah, I, I do, you know, it is early in the morning, so people can be just tired. But what I'm saying is that they're comfortable enough to go to sleep is more so what I'm referring to. I know it's, it's a hard, and I, I know you're going to, there's always a way that you can say, well, no, but this, but that. But just hear what I'm saying. I want to drive in such a way that they can sleep back there. They're so comfortable. They're just so calm. They're just so peaceful. You know, uh, my music isn't super loud. Like I, I kind of, you know, keep it at a, at a pace unless they tell me, hey, turn it up. I ain't no problem. You said it, not me. <laughs> That's one of my jokes. But, um, you know, like I'm going to kind of keep it. I, the whole environment is peaceful. So now they feel like they can go to sleep. They're not being jerked around, you know, as I'm driving. They're not 
I'm not running through bumps. I'm not running through speed bumps and stuff like that. It's calm, you know? I, I And all I'm saying is that there is stuff that you can control. You can control how hard you break. You know, when that light turns red, you control if you wanna just press on the brake and slam everybody forward, or you kinda like, all right, cool. My goal, the way that I think about it is, do they know that I'm coming to a stop? I, I, I Yeah, regardless of all of the other reasons, do they know that I'm coming to a stop is more so. And I mean, it takes a balance. I'm uh, Again, you know, I, I'm in Miami, so we have incredible traffic. You know, you go too slow, people are going to cut you off. You go too fast, people are going to cut you off. I mean, people are just going to cut you off. But, you know, like, it, you have to drive a certain type of way here. I get it. But what I'm saying is, even with that, I still try to be smooth. You would be surprised how many people say, damn, yeah, that, that was a really good ride. It was really calm. It was really smooth. You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the compliment that you want. If you get that a lot, then you know that you're driving well, you know, because that's ultimately what helps increase your, increase your tips. So you have a comfortable environment. People feel good when they get in your car. You're having good conversations. You know, you're, you're not talking about crazy stuff. You know, hey, you know, I just seen a stripper and she did that. Da, da, da. You're not talking about that type of stuff in the car. Or, hey, you know, I, I'm on only, you know what's weird and what's crazy, right? I don't need to kind of give you the descriptions but you're having regular conversations. Ultimately, what I'm saying is you're being a human and you're conscious enough that there is somebody in your backseat. And that's huge, right? As long as you're conscious enough that there's somebody in your backseat, you, you kind of, you're gonna increase your tips. That makes sense. So yeah, um, I'm here. Uh, I hope that helped. If it did, Please go ahead, if it helped, please go ahead and give me a like, uh, leave a comment, let me know how you feel, um, I'm here for my next ride, but uh, you know, I, I like always, I do have affiliate links in the description, um, I'll leave them in the comment section as well, other than that, let me know how I can help, uh, this was just one of those videos that a lot of people seem to have problems with. And uh, I kind of wanted to go over it. Um, but yeah, um, if you need anything, let me know. Um, I'm here to help. <laughs> I love helping. Talk to you soon.